Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at Genshin Tarot, a solo and cooperative deck-building battling game based on the Genshin Impact IP. And disclaimer that I was sent a review copy of this one. I tend to like cooperative deck builders, especially when they have good tactical play between the players. Does Genshin Tarot meet that standard? Let's find out and get to the list. <laughs> So my number five point, which is a mix for my taste, are the elements of randomness in the game. And these are exemplified in the most extreme way by the ley line cards you draw each round. In that some are completely positive for the player, some are completely negative, most do a bit of both. But they all get shuffled back into the deck at the end of each round. So I've had games where I drew all of the worst ones in a row. And I've had games where I drew all positive ones in a row, leading to some swinginess in the experience. But then sometimes the enemies you get perfectly match or perfectly counter the things you're doing with the cards in your hand. And that brings up the card draw and whether the cards you get are going to combo together well or not. This is a mix because it gives the game more life, more variety in the plays. When things work out, it's really exciting. And when they get desperate, you have to try harder. So depending on your taste, this could be a full pro or a full con. My number four point is also a mix for my taste, and that's focused on the solo and cooperative play in the game. So each player has their own group of enemies that they have to face individually, but many player cards have effects that will let you help the other players hitting their enemies and such. So on the positive side, this creates a nice balance in the cooperative play where you have to focus on your own board while also having discussions and throwing aid to others when needed. But on the negative side, some characters have lots of cooperative options, while others have none at all. So in the random draw of characters at the beginning of the game, sometimes you'll end up with a cooperative game where you can't help each other very much, and in a solo game, you'll end up with a lot of cooperative abilities that don't really boost your strength that much. But my number three point is a full pro for my taste, and those are the enemies you face in the game. So you have sort of this pyramidal structure, this isn't the entire thing. And how it works is only the exposed enemies, ones not covered by any other cards, will be face up at one time. And there's a lot of variety in the enemies, the special powers they have, and their statistics, and whether they're stronger or weaker is balanced by the more of the amount of resources you get to buy cards with later for defeating them. And both facing off these individual enemies and the order you kill them in is really interesting, because if you do it badly and expose too many at once, you could be facing a ton of opposition all at once and really be in a bad spot. And the bosses you fight at the end are really nice too. There are only three of them, which is a bit of a negative, but they are very diverse, they are very challenging and will certainly uh, lead to an exciting end game every time. My number two point is also a full pro for my taste because this is a deck builder and I really like the way they do the deck building here. So you start out with two types of unique cards for each of your four characters. So even from the beginning, your deck is interesting and can do cool tricks and combos. You never just have like basic cards that give you one money or one attack. And then when it's time to add better cards to your deck, instead of bloating it with more and more cards, instead you take the existing cards in your deck and upgrade them. So your deck stays the same size. It just becomes stronger. The combos become more uh, meaningful. And this is personally one of my favorite ways to do deck building. Uh, the upgrade system kind of leads to a combination of adding cards and culling cards at the same time, and it's just consistently fun. They go straight to your hand. You get to use them immediately. It's really a nice system. Although the fact that you can upgrade your cards and use them in the same turn does lead to my one caveat in that new players might be a little bit overwhelmed by the fact that they can upgrade uh, eight different cards uh, at some times and uh, trying to choose which ones to do and which ones are most advantageous in the current tactical situation can be a little bit overwhelming when you're first playing. And finally, my number one, a full pro, at least for my taste, are the card combos and the great tactical choices you have in your turn. So this is not like Hero Realms, Star Realms, Aeon Zen, those kind of deck builders where uh, your hand just kind of plays itself and you tend to just uh, play out all the cards and total up the stuff you got. It's closer to something like Imperium Classics or Legends where you have a limited number of actions in your turn. You can't use every card, so you have to kind of pick and choose. But then if you combo them in the right way, you'll get to play more. But not only are the card play choices and the upgrading choices tough on their own, you also have these elemental bursts that you can build up to and fire off without an action unique to each of the characters. And then a big aspect from the Genshin Impact video game, you place these elemental tokens on the enemies, and if you combo them in certain ways, you unlock uh, additional abilities and effects. So there's just a bunch of stuff and choices going on each turn, and again, it's going to come down to your taste. I love it as someone who likes uh, more tactically engaging deck builders and not ones that are a little bit more streamlined, but uh, others might find it a little bit overwhelming at times, again, especially when you're first learning the game. Overall, I can recommend Genshin Tarot if you like deck builders with a really tight, controlled uh, deck where you're not adding tons of cards to it and kind of ballooning it out of control. 
Also, if you like deck builders and card games in general with tough tactical choices and combo possibilities. And finally, if you like cooperation where you're managing your own stuff, but sometimes helping the others out instead of constantly all fighting the same thing. But on the other hand, you might want to avoid this one if you really like deck builders to be very simple where you just play out your entire hand and I don't know, do like five attack and that's it. And also a big one, you might want to avoid this if you're not in the US because it is quite an expensive game, $100 for the base game. If you're in the US on the game's website, you can get, I think, 20% off and free shipping. But I don't think you get that if you're outside the US. So it's going to become quite a pricey proposition to pick up. And if you want to see the game in action, I had a playthrough from a week or two ago. You can check that out. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.